Well, hi everyone, John Walls here on theCUBE as we continue our CUBE conversations as part of the AWS Startup Showcase. And we welcome in today, Krish Nagade, who is the uh, founder and the CEO of Fiddler AI. And Krishna, good to see you today. Thanks for joining us here on theCUBE. Hey John, thanks thanks so much for inviting us and I'm glad to be here and uh, looking forward to our conversation. Yeah, me too. And, and first off, I want to say congratulations as, as I look at your your companies, this this tremendous roster, this list of awards that just keep coming your way. Uh, most recently recognized by Forbes as one of the top 50 AI companies to watch here in 2021. I know Gartner called you one of their cool companies uh, not too long ago, a World Economic Forum also giving you a shout out. So whatever it is you're doing, you're doing it very well, but it's got to feel good, I would think. Some validation to get all this kind of recognition. Absolutely, and we've been very fortunate to get all the recognition. Uh, you know, Part of it is also because of the space we are playing in, right? A lot of uh, companies are you know, uh, operationalizing AI and uh, therefore, you know, this whole point of, you know, explainability, monitoring and governance of AI is like forefront and it's in the news for various different reasons. So there's a lot of, uh, a lot of you know, uh, uh, good sort of uh, talk that is going on in the press around how one should build responsible AI. And we are, we are fortunate to be, you know, in, in the space and pioneering, you know, some of the technologies here. Right, and talk about machine learning monitoring, obviously in the AI space. And, and you mentioned explainability. So let's just talk about that concept broadly first off and and, and right. explain to our viewers what you mean by explainability in this particular uh, context. Yeah, it's a good question. So uh, if you think about an AI system, one of the main differences between it and a traditional software system is that it's a black box in the sense that you cannot open it up and read its code like a traditional software system. Um, the reason is, you know, the AI systems are built using data and training models, which are represented in this uh, in this in this non-human readable format. And you cannot really understand how a model is actually making a prediction at any given point of time. Mm -hmm. So therefore, what happens is when you are deploying these AI systems at scale for a variety of use cases, let's say credit underwriting or you know screening resumes or clinical diagnosis, which are extremely you know, uh, important for, for general human beings, there is a need to understand how the AI system is working. You know, why did it approve a particular person's loan or reject someone's loan? Or why did it reject someone's you know, resume from you know, a job screening pipeline? You know, how, is, how is it working overall, right? And so this is where explainability becomes important because you need to, uh, to understand the AI system. You need a way to probe it, to interrogate it, to understand how the uh, system is making predictions, how is it being influenced by various inputs you're supplying to the system. And so this gamut of technologies uh, or the algorithms that have come across in the last you know, few years have really matured to a point where you know, products like Fiddler are you know, developing them and productizing them for the general uh, enterprise to you know, put it in their machine learning and AI workflows. Mm -hmm. So you're talking about context basically, right? I mean, trying to give everybody an idea. This is, this is you know, kind of where this uh, input's coming. This is where the problem is. This right. is where the bottleneck might be, whatever it is. And, and doing that in, in real time, very efficient uh, operation here. Um, well, let's talk about the ML world right now and in terms of, of how it relates to artificial intelligence and, and this interaction, you know, that, that we're seeing. And, the, I guess the, the problem that you are trying to fix, if you will, right. in terms of, of machine learning monitoring. So let's just deal with that first off. Uh, when you look at somebody's architecture and somebody's setup, what do you see? What are you looking for? And what kind of problems are you trying to solve for your clients? Yeah, so just following up what, what I said, uh, the, the, the two main problems with operationalizing AI is one is the black box nature of AI, which I already right. talked about. The other problem is that the AI system is fundamentally a stochastic system or a probabilistic system. By that, I mean that it, its performance, you know, its predictions can change over time based on the data it is receiving. So it's not a deterministic system like a traditional software systems where you expect the same output all the time, right? So when you have a system that is stochastic in nature where its performance can vary based on the data it is receiving, then you are in a situation where uh, you have uncertainty, 
right? You know, you let's say you have an AI system that is deployed for serving a credit underwriting model or a fraud, you know, detection use case. Mm -hmm. And you you you'll see that okay, sometimes accuracy is up, sometimes accuracy is down. You know, when do you want, when do you trust your predictions? When you're not, how do you know if the model is actually performing in the same manner that you trained it? All of these issues open up the need for continuous monitoring of these AI systems, because without which you may have AI systems making bad predictions for your users, hurting your business metrics, potentially making you know biased decisions that can put you into your company into a compliance or a brand reputation risk scenario. To avoid all of these things, by you can actually monitor these AI systems continuously so that you know exactly you know they're performing the way you expect them to be. Do they, do you need to retrain them right now? Right, or do you need to shut them down because they're actually not uh, predicting the way that you expect them to be? So this is actually very important. And so that's what Fiddler tries to solve for our customers by helping them uh, you know, operationalize AI with you know, full visibility and explainability. Right? So you can essentially install Fiddler in your workflow to continuously monitor your AI systems and analyze and explain them when you have questions about how they're working. I mean, you talked about governance there a little bit, you know, compliance, obviously a uh, crit critical uh, issue, big concern, fraud detection, security, just in general here, right. um, as we know, I mean, we keep almost every day, it seems like we're hearing about some kind of security intrusion. Um, so in, in terms of identifying vulnerabilities or in terms of uh, identifying anomalies, uh, whatever it might be, what, what kind of work are you doing in that space to give your client base the kind of comfort and the peace of mind that everybody is searching for these days? Right, I mean, if you if you step back a little bit, John, uh, we are truly living in the age of algorithms, right? So everything that we interact with on a day-to-day -day basis, the movies we watch or the, you know, when we request an Uber driver or when we uh, go to a, a sort of a financial institution and, request for a, a sort of a loan application or a mortgage. Um, there are algorithms behind the scenes that are processing our requests and delivering the experiences that we have. Now, increasingly these algorithms are becoming AI-based algorithms. And when you have these AI-based algorithms, they're, they're trained on this data that's available that an institution may collect from their users or they may buy from other third parties. And when you develop these AI systems based on this data, if this data is not equitably distributed amongst all you know, different um, ethnicity backgrounds, people coming from different cultures, different religions, different races, different genders, you may actually build systems that can make you know, very uh, you know, uh, different decisions for different individuals based on, based on like this bias that could creep into them. And so this actually needs, this means that you know, at the end of the day, you can actually create a dystopian world where you know some people get like you know really great decisions from your systems but some people are left out right so therefore you know this aspect of governing your ai systems so that you're validating what you're building up front you're validating the data that you are using to train the systems you're continuously monitoring the systems that so that they're actually producing the right outcomes for your users and then you can actually explain if some customer asks you or some you know regulator or a third party asks you how is it how your system is working is very very important this is an emerging area in the industry certain um, company certain sectors already have this for example financial services it's in companies like banks where it's mandated to have model governance so that every model that they are deploying needs to be validated and needs to be monitored and we are seeing the emergence of general ai governance creep into other sectors as well and so this is like a broader topic that covers explainability covers monitoring covers detecting bias in your ai systems and ensuring that you're building safe and responsible ai for your for your customers and your organization yeah, I find the the, the bias uh, point really interesting. Yeah, actually, because you, you don't, I, I I hadn't really thought about these prejudices or or subjectivities. You know, we might bring to our work with us in terms of what we look at, what we ignore, what we process, how we don't. But it's a really interesting point you just raised. So uh, thank you for that. Um, and and there's also the kind of the issue of data drift too a little bit, right? To, it's like, where did it go? <laughs> <Correct. You know? laughs> what are we doing here? Where, what happened to it? And so maybe if you could talk about that a little bit in terms of 
all this data that's coming in and 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 corralling it, right? Making right. sure that it stays organized and stays in a way that you can analyze and process right. and then glean insight from. It. Yeah, data drift is one of the main reasons why AI systems deteriorate in performance. So for example, let's say I am trying to build uh, a recommendation system that predicts the items that you want to buy when you go to an e-commerce website. Now, if I have used data pre-COVID, then the user behavior was very different, right? That kind of items people were probably buying before you know, February 2020 was like much probably much different than the kind of items that people were buying after it. Mm -hmm. So what happens is when you train your AI systems on data sets uh, that are older, but then that data has changed ever since because of an event like COVID-19 has happened or some other seasonality uh, has kicked in, then your AI systems are seeing different distribution data. For example, you might see that suddenly you know, people were shopping, let's say in March, April last year, people were shopping for all kinds of, you know, uh, toilet paper and all kinds of things to stock up for, you know, for to be to be ready for lockdown, right? And maybe they were not buying similar amounts in the uh, previously. So therefore, if you have an inventory management system based on AI or an e-commerce recommendation system based on AI, you know, they would see data drift because the buying patterns mm -hmm. are different. The amount of stuff that people are buying in terms of toilet paper is completely shifted. And so your model is actually may not be predicting as accurately as it, as it would, right? So therefore, identifying this data drift and, and, and alerting your AI engineer so that they can be prepared for this is very important. Otherwise, what you would see is if you're an e-commerce company, this has actually happened, you know, Instacart, our grocery delivery company and another company, Etsy.com, they blogged about it where they have seen their models go down in accuracy you know, from 90% to 65% when this data shift happened, you know, especially during COVID-19. And so you need you the need ability to continuously monitor for drift so that when uh, you can catch these things earlier and then, you know, uh, save your business from, you know, losing, you know, in terms of, you know, business metrics, like such as number of sales that you may be making, number of bad recommendations that your, your systems are making to your users. So we, we've talked a lot you know, about these various components of monitoring of, of which, you know, all of which you do extremely well. Um, and I was reading earlier uh, just a little bit about the company and we talked about accountability. We've already talked about that. We talked about fraud detection. We talked about reliability. There was also a point about ethical uh, considerations, eth right. you know, and so um, I was interested in that, hearing from you about that in terms of why that's a, a pillar of your service or, or what exactly that was pointed toward in terms of monitoring and, and right. what, uh, what you can do. Right. So, so if the, so I'll just go back to like a famous quote from Mark Andreessen. He mentioned, you know, a few years ago that software is eating the world, right? Mm -hmm. Now what's happening is AI is eating software. All the software that we are consuming is becoming AI based software because basically at the end of the day, some intelligence is being baked into the software to make it, you know, predict more interesting things for you to make those decisions instead of rule-based decisions, make it more AI based decisions. And so therefore, it is very important that when we are building this software, we need to use uh, ethical practices. You know, we need to know how, where you're collecting the data from. It can be very dangerous if you don't do it, For ex and, and you can land into trouble. And we have seen this incident, these incidents many times, right? For example, in 2019, when Apple and Goldman Sachs came up with a credit card, a lot of customers complained about, you know, gender bias uh, the, with, with respect to the credit card limits that the algorithm was setting. You know, in the same household, the husband and wife were getting 10 times in terms of uh, difference between the credit limit between a male and a female, hmm. right? Even though they probably had similar salary ranges, similar FICO scores, right? Hmm. So if you do not actually make sure that you know uh, you're collecting data from the right sources if your data sets are not are balanced if your models if your algorithms are tested for bias you know beforehand before you deploy them and then you're continuously monitoring them these are all ethical practices these are all the, these are responsible ways of building your ai 
you can actually you know land into trouble your customers will complain about it you know you would lose your you know rep brand reputation and at the end of the day you will be essentially in addition in, instead of actually adding value to the customers you may be actually hurting them right and so this is actually why it's so important and it's become more important when the more stake the stakes the even the, the higher the stakes are right you know for example when it's being used for you know criminal justice scenarios or when it's being used for clinical diagnosis scenarios being able to ensure that the system is making unbiased decisions is very very important well before i let you go too i i like you to touch base on your aws relationship about you know what was the genesis of that yeah. and and currently what it is that that you're working on together to provide this uh, great value to your customers Absolutely. So the follow up uh, to this ethical AI is like Amazon as a company is interested in in pursuing you know uh, responsible AI. Both you know they have a lot of AI products, so they are looking for in you know uh, fostering uh, a community and ecosystem of AI technologies. And along in that hypothesis, they actually invested in Fiddler last year. uh in terms of uh um, enabling us to develop this explainable ai and ethical ai technology and so we are working with alexa fund uh and also like uh, aws ecosystem uh in terms of partnering with how effectively fiddler can be delivered to other aws customers uh through like through their marketplace and other 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 sort of uh, uh areas that we can distribute the software so it's a great partnerships we are very very excited about the opportunity to work with alexa fund as well as the aws uh, ecosystem uh, it increases in you know, other opportunity for us to to uh, enable a lot more customers than we than we can otherwise so this is an this is a great win win situation for both amazon and fiddler Well, it, it sure is, uh, and and um, congratulations on that and developing that partnership. I know it's working well for your clients, and it's working well for Fiddler AI, obviously by the number of recognitions that have been coming your way. So, Krishna, uh, we wish you continued success, and thanks for the time here today on the Cube. Yep, thank you so much, John. Uh, it was a pleasure, you know, talking to you today. I enjoyed it. Thank you, John Walls. Here, wrapping up our conversation with uh, Fiddler AI's Krishna Gade, talking about today about. machine learning monitoring on the AWS startup showcase